part of what I've done for each one of these events is I've asked somebody that I know well, so I've asked two people today uh, to talk about their company and what purpose means to their organization. I'm gonna, this guy will be only slightly embarrassed that I do this intro this way, but uh, John Gilliland from Investment Real Estate, which is kind of, you don't know that name, but you know move-in storage. They have uh, storage companies around here that have the cow on the outside, you know, you can see that. Five years ago when the, uh, or six, how many years ago? Seven, John, now maybe. Eight years ago when the economy tanked, John had purchased a whole bunch of these locations and all of a sudden the real estate world turned upside down and his company was at the precipice of disaster. And lesser people would not have succeeded and taken the company to where it is today. And what I'd like to do is to have, you know, my friend John Gilliland come up and talk to you about his company and how he sees purpose in that organization. Yeah. And he's, he said to me, do I really have to do this? So, yeah. I'm nervous. Purpose. John Dame says that purpose is a state of being. Aristotle, being in the same company as John Dame, <laughs> Aristotle argued that purpose in the end of man was happiness. For happiness is self-evidently what all men seek and strive for. It is what he directs all his powers toward. There are four levels of happiness, according to Dr. Bob Spitzer, a noted professor of psychiatry at Columbia University. My purpose has revolved and evolved around each one of these happiness levels since 1998 when I started my business. This is a short story of the phases of that evolution. The first level of happiness is instant gratification. It, uh, I want it all and I want it now. Some call it sensual satisfaction, like eating, sleeping, sex, or getting the latest deal done. Sounds like somebody I knew a long, long time ago. The pursuit of instant gratification is okay as long as it's not the only happiness that you're pursuing. I relate this instant gratification to my first uh, years in the working world where I was brokering real estate deals and working for a commission. The second level of, satis of uh, uh, happiness is ego gratification. Being the best, being the fastest, being the smartest one in the room, making lots of money and having all the toys, being the proverbial 900 pound gorilla with all the power that comes with it. Many of us entrepreneurs either started at this level or in some cases are stuck there. My purpose at this point in my business career was to thrive. In 19, or I'm sorry, in 2008, John Dame helped our company with strategic planning and came up with a purpose for the firm that read, as professional self-storage brokers, operators, developers, and owners, we are focused on helping our customers, clients, and investors achieve their dreams and goals. This process started to shift my mindset from it being all about me to all about others. As I mentioned, I started my business investment real estate in 1998. We specialize in the self-storage business where we broker, manage, build, and own self-storage facilities in the 10 state, mid-Atlantic, and northeast states. We became the leading firm in the market with over 800 million in brokerage sales. We were the 11th largest management company of self-storage facilities in the United States. We built over two and a half million square feet of self-storage. We owned 15 stores in central Pennsylvania. Yes, life was grand. We were making lots of money and we were spending it even faster. My ego was well-developed and a well-oiled machine. Then the Great Recession of 2008 came about. At that point in 2008, I had $76 million worth of uh, self-storage facilities under contract in escrow, which equals about $1.5 million in commissions. 
None of them closed. The construction business came to a screeching halt, as some of you in this room know. And virtually no buildings were built from 2010 to 2014 in the entire country. I laid off everybody in that company in 2010. The management business had 87 people on the payroll. I never missed a payroll, but many days it all came together an hour or two before the payroll company took the deposit. I sold it in 2010. We had six brand new self-storage developments that we built from ground up. They were lease up. None of them were over 30% occupancy. Mind you, 60% occupancy is break even. My share of debt at that point totaled about $30 million. The bankers were my new best friends. My purpose evolved. <laughs> it was now solely to survive. Did I mention that my beautiful wife and I have four children, including twin boys who started at Penn State in 2010? When my son asked me to fill out the scholarship financial aid form, uh, there were not enough boxes to enter the negative number that I showed on my tax return from the prior year. True story. <laughs> uh, tried to tell them that and they didn't understand. Um, oh, and uh, one other thing to add to the stress. On September 2nd, 2009, my wife Denise was diagnosed with breast cancer. My wonderful family had always been my rock, my foundation to fall back on in dealing with these financial issues. The news of cancer threatened our st that stability in a most dramatic fashion. Well, what do we do from here? As stated, our purpose was to survive, both financially and now literally. The first thing I did was assemble a great team of advisors, employees, attorneys with all kinds of specialties, CPAs, CFOs for hire, workout specialists, mentors, and most important, family. I told my wife everything, and my kids too. We had a number of meetings where I looked around the table and I figured out what the hourly billing rate was, all added up together, and it was well over $5,000. Uh, we even discussed the B word, but I refused, opting for the harder but what I thought was the higher road. I said, I'll be damned if I want to check that box on every loan application for the rest of my life asking, have you ever declared bankruptcy? I went to every bank a year ahead of when we knew that the cash was going to run out and said, hey, I need more time. I never asked them to forgive any debt. Some gave it. Some vehemently said no. We fought like hell and we worked out a deal with each and every bank. Some were good. Some were bad, but they all got done. I started to get in shape physically. If I didn't, I knew the stress was going to kill me. There weren't many deals to do or work to do, so I figured I might as well start running half marathons, and then marathons, and then triathlons, and then tough mutters and the such. I was in the best shape of my life. I had the strength and the stamina to survive. I volunteered with charitable organizations, the Boy Scouts, Presbyterian Church, Volunteers of America, Rotary, and we started our own family foundation to give our money and our time to causes that we believe in. I had to give back to feel good about myself again. I sold everything that wasn't bolted down to fund operations and to pay off debt. I sold my ranch in Idaho. I did a sale lease back on my home office in York. I sold properties that weren't cash flowing. I sold all the vacant land I owned. I backed out of deals and walked away from substantial deposits. I borrowed from Peter, Paul, and Mary to pay Fred, Jim, and Russell every week to keep the machine going. I found new financial partners that had cash and lots of it. We dug deep into operations with the help of my Vistage group and my Vistage chairs. We shaved expenses, we boosted revenues, and we demanded that all operations not only break even, but made a profit. We made the hard decisions, and it paid off. We saved all of our self-storage properties. 
Yes, my, my interest was diminished in some. Yes, I was battered and bloodied, but by God, we kept them all. We, we, we did what we had to do in all areas of business to survive. And yes, my wife and the cancer thing. She took the bull by the horns, a super proactive approach, and immediately had a double mastectomy to get rid her body of the cancer. She started a prayer group called Tuesdays with Mary following the, two, the following Tuesday right after her diagnosis. There are now over 40 women in that group, and they have never, ever missed a Tuesday morning. In fact, if you, they're, they're praying right now at that meeting. And luckily, thank God, Denise has been cancer-free now for nearly seven years. Thank you. <clears throat> so what did I learn from all this? Lots of things that someday may fill a book. But most importantly, I learned that the third level of happiness is service gratification, or which can be best described simply as love. Loving others more than self. Moving from self to others in your focus. It's when we start to live to serve others that leads to happiness level three. I wanted to survive so that I could pursue happiness level three. As Graham Morehouse describes in his essay, What is Man?, Happiness level three involves commitment, giving, loyalty, care, concern, forgiveness, acceptance, compassion, and most of all, self-sacrifice. So many people were helpful to me, to my family, and to our companies that the fight for survival became the fight to say thank you to all those who helped get us through the dark times in our lives. It was a fight to give back to those who stood with us and to those who stood with us the satisfaction to say that they help and their help worked. It was a fight so I could share my story with family and friends and colleagues to give them hope. And it was a fight that taught me to drop to my knees and say thank you to God for being on my side every step of the way. So we survived, and now on to the next level. The fourth level of happiness is allowing our purpose to define us versus us defining our own purpose. Thus, the ongoing search for what my purpose actually is, it's like saying, I am here, use me. Working with Doreen, Le Doreen Leckler of VisionLinked, I've embarked on a journey to find my purpose in life once again. She had some great tools that we use, like the lifestyle circumplex and the spiritual gift assessment. She used her skills and knowledge to draw out of me what really makes me happy. Then we put it to paper, and we are now working to refine and hone in on my real purpose. So here's the first draft of my purpose in life. To expend my God-given gifts and abilities in service to others so I can help inspire, lead, and motivate them to achieve their dreams and destinies as God intended. I have a long way to go to fine tune my purpose in life, but I am working on it with some help from some of you in this room and many others in my life. I hope that now you have an understanding of the four levels of happiness a little better. I hope you learned something from my story that will benefit you. And my biggest hope is that you find your purpose in business and in life. Thank you for your time and attention.